The Honourable Member for Fort Rouge. Thank you much, Madam Speaker. For one Fort Rouge constituent I spoke to recently and her partner, the tuition fee, income tax, rebate, and the education tax credits were important. They meant that she could pay off her student loans within a few years. It also helped her to, si to decide to return to Manitoba after grad school and helped her partner save up to buy a house. So I'd like to know if this government plans to continue these programs. Will the Premier commit today to keeping the tuition rebate and education tax credits in place? Yeah. The Honourable Minister of Finance. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank the member for the question. Uh, that member and all the members of this House know that it is no secret that in Manitoba we have a vast array of tax credits, some that are hangers on from years long ago. Uh, what we have indicated as a, as a province and as a new government is that there needs to be coherence in our tax credit system. There needs to be uh, goals. Uh, there needs to be results. And we are making sure in the comprehensive review of tax credits that we will get results for all Manitobans and that the strategies will align and, and that there will be coherence in these tax uh, credits going forward. The Honourable Member for Fort Rouge on a supplementary question. Uh, miigwech, uh, Madam Speaker. Of course, uh, the result of the tax credits that I'm speaking of is to put money back into the pockets of students who stay here in Manitoba, make their careers and make their lives here. And we know that affordable tuition is a big deal for students in Manitoba, especially if the Premier makes good on his plan to uh, hike tuition uh, rates for these students. But one way that they can offset that is by keeping these tax credits in place so that students can get some of their tuition back at uh, tax time. So I'd like to ask again, will this Premier commit to keeping the tuition rebate and education tax credits in place here in Manitoba? The Honourable Minister of Finance. I thank the member for the question. Uh, when we were conducting our uh, very significant pre-budget consultative exercise, we heard from students in all corners of the province saying, help us reprofile and put the emphasis on uh, getting access to post-secondary institutions. The member is incorrect when he says that the tax credit of which he speaks is to put money into the pockets of Order. students. It shows a misunderstanding of that tax credit. It is not for students. The tax credit of which he speaks is for graduates, people in their pr in professions claiming on past years when they used to be a student. Uh, so, so that's not the same as what he describes. We need more support for students going into school. That's the, the results that we will deliver on behalf of all Manitobans. The Honourable Member for Fort Rouge on a final supplementary. Well, miigwech once again, Madam Speaker. I uh, didn't hear any uh, direct commitment from the Finance Minister to keep these two tax credits in place to help uh, Manitoba students, who then go on to become Manitoba graduates, as we all know, in the House here. Uh, so I am concerned that the government may be uh, withdrawing $67 million in supports for students in these uh, form of these tax credits without bringing anything else back to the table. Uh, to help students with affordability and uh, you know the, the rising cost of tuition. So can the Premier commit to the House today that if he is to withdraw $67 million in support for students in the form of tax credits, that he will give back $67 million to Manitoba students in supports to help them pay their tuitions and student debt? The Honourable First Minister. The previous administration took $300 million out of the pockets of Manitobans when they raised the PST, and before that, close to a quarter of a billion dollars by broadening the PST. The impact that young people across the province in a significant way by raising the costs for them to get to school if they drive a car, or to buy gas if they uh, needed to fuel the car, also to pay for accommodations because they uh, raised the uh, PST to put it on the uh, cost of insuring the place where the uh, student might want to stay and in numerous other ways, hundreds of ways in fact, they put a, a greater burden in front of young people to get to post-secondary. What we want to do is make sure that that door is opened, in particular for young Manitobans who have a, a challenging financial circumstance. And that's where the resources need to be invested to keep those doors open for young people who are challenged financially. And that's what we're going to focus on, Madam Speaker. Where the previous administration failed, we will succeed. Here, here.
The Honourable Member for St. John's. Thank you, Madam Speaker. In early February, when